All right, we're back with the Omega air compressor, the supercharger from Air Guns of Arizona that I'm unboxing. Um, thought I'd show you the front of it a little bit more, some pretty obvious things. This is where the power goes in. Here's your hour meter. Mine hasn't been turned on, and it's got a little over nine hours on it already. This is where you adjust the time for the uh, purge device on it, and uh, this is your resettable circuit breaker. So we've got our made our overall on off which I believe turns on our fan again I haven't plugged it in yet the start and stop of our compressor itself on the top we've got the air output here which we'll hook up in a second our water tank cap which <clears throat> I couldn't tell initially but it's got a clear top which is this is where they tell you to make sure you see water circulating the bleed valve right here for disconnecting for uh, bleeding off before you disconnect either your tank or your gun whichever it is Burst discs, this is our safety, and they give you some, some extra pieces to replace if you blow them. And then this is where you periodically put the lubricant that they supply. They supply a couple of things, which one is a, a full set of O-rings and seals and these little brass things. I don't know if you can see them. Those are the extra burst discs. That's a one well good, but there's no instructions on how to rebuild the compressor. You can do it yourself, apparently. Or I got the leftover floor sweepings, one or the other. And they also give you this handy set of tweezers. I'm guessing this has to do with replacing the burst discs. But again, simply a, a guess. So what we're going to do, before we run it, of course, we're going to put in the, the ice, which is an enhancer for the coolant, the antifreeze. We're going to fill the rest up with bottled water. It says very specifically, don't use distilled water. So I'm using bottled drinking water, which is filtered water, which is what they say. Um, we have RO water in the house, uh, but I'm not going to go there because our source has got a lot of iron to start with. And I just as soon uh, go with something else. This might take a half a bottle of drinking water. You know, I'm just talking about the, I'm looking at one right now. And number of ounces, the 16 ounces. So it might take eight ounces. It's, you can see the tank on the side. This is the reservoir right here and the tubes. By the time it runs, yeah, half three quarters of a bottle of water won't be anything big. It is heavy, and it's all in that motor in the bottom. This pressure gauge right here, and the reason it's so big and hideous looking is because it's actually a mechanical switch as well. Um, there are two fingers on it. One is the primary, one is the secondary pressure. You say which one is which, you can't tell. Well, thankfully, you can't, they won't switch sides on each other. One will go to zero, and the other one will go all the way up to the top, but they, you can't reverse them, so that's how you know you're high and low. You simply, it's actually a mechanical deal. You push down on this, just pushing down on a finger inside, which catches a, a little nubbin, and you can move it back and forth. So right now, I have it set at roughly 104,000 PSI. They recommend setting the low end or the, the secondary at 100, so I did. And not to set it above 4,000 or 4,500, I set it at 4. I don't have a gun that will take more than that, and I'm not filling a tank. first to dilute the coolant and then I'll add the coolant. I don't even know if it'll take half. Well I could cut the I could cut the tip off. Doesn't really seem necessary. One of the other things they don't tell you, and I'll have to inquire with them, is exactly what type of antifreeze this is. It looks like the newfangled stuff GM came up with. And they also don't tell you where you can buy this ice stuff in a reasonable quantity. You know, you don't want to have to go out and buy a gallon at a time. So those two bits of information are not not available. 
Okay, I cut the top of the pair of side cuts I had handy. We'll just put this in. There's no nothing in the instructions that say an ounce of this or two ounces of that. So that's why we're going with, gosh, I hope those were pre-measured quantities. It's got a nice little cap. Don't know what for. Alright, so we got the coolants in, and I've still got a little room here. So we're going to finish topping her off. Now, I'm going to assume that when I fire the sucker up, it's going to fill the hoses. So we're just going to put this on a little ways. The on-off switch is going to start, to my understanding, the pump running and the fan. Because the other thing the instructions tell you is do not, do not, uh, when the compressor stops, leave it turned on so the pump and the compressor, or the pump and the coolant continue to circulate. It's like any type of equipment, a welder, things like that, you want them to, to continue to run to cool off. paper disc over the air output to keep garbage out. Take the old metric adjustable. I'm going to go with that right there. I'm going to open the bleed valve up because A, this isn't connected to anything. It's got a little plug in it right now which is nice. But in case I don't understand the, the switches, I want to make sure I'm not building pressure in a blank line. The other thing they don't tell you, it's probably good to have at some point, but they send you this little Y wrench, which I'm quite sure these three items meet some need in here, but they don't tell you what. So I'm going to guess that this has to do with in the need of rebuilding the whole thing. We'll just set that aside. I already checked under the grease cap and it has grease in it so we're not going to add any more to that. <clears throat> the book does say every n number of hours you add some more in there. So let's see here. That's all set. We're not going to worry about the uh, draining device. We're going to turn it on. So either I bumped it or mine came with a breaker in the off position, so that's what the deal was. So at this point I've turned it on. The, uh, the fan's blowing. And we have started circulating water. Let's see if we can get you a shot where you can see that. See a little stream of water coming out the side there? So I'm going to stop it and fill it back up. Well, quite to my surprise, it is almost still as full as I had it. You can see it right there near the top. So. I'm going to add just a touch more. That tells me when they test ran it for those nine hours, and although I can't see it in this tube, the, uh, the tubes and the heads and the water jacket must have all still been full. We'll add just a splash more. So I've added less than a quarter of a bottle of drinking bottle of water to it. So, not a whole lot. Yeah, let's turn it back on again. Looks 
to be playing nicely. Let's start the compressor a minute and then shut it back off. Well, I'm real sure that's not right. 